Radio Surgery for Brain Metastases. This is one of a series of cancer-related videos that can be found on the website about cancer.com. How does this work? This is a typical case. A patient with lung cancer comes in with an MRI that shows a single brain metastases. The picture on the left. In the middle, we've generated a computer target and use highly focused radiation on that spot. And then on the right, the MRI three months later is totally back to normal. Tumor gone and no side effects. Well, why do they call it radio surgery if it's really radiation? Well, one, it was pioneered by neurosurgeons. It just uses a single large dose of radiation that's carefully aimed or targeted. The goal is to destroy, or the medical word, ablate the target. There is no cutting or scalpels, but the machines were originally named gamma knife or cyber knife. And then you will see the word stereotactic use. Stereotactic simply means multiple beams are used to target the same small spot using 3D imaging like CAT scans or MRIs. The focus of this talk is on radio surgery for brain metastases. Brain metastases, of course, is a cancer that started elsewhere in the body, lung, breast, or melanoma, and then gets into the blood and spreads to the brain. I have separate videos on the website just on the topic of brain metastases. And why are brain metastases good targets compared to regular primary brain tumors? Well, the picture on the left is the glioblastoma. The normal brain cells have gone bad, so the cancer is mixed in or infiltrated into normal brain tissue, and it's hard to get a clear target. The picture on the right shows a metastasis in the brain, and it's pushing the normal brain tissue away so it's separate and a good target. This image on the left of a melanoma in the brain, you can see well-defined target, and an MRI of a similar patient with a single round nodule makes an easy target for radiosurgery. The type of machines that can be used, and I've used them all, include gamma knife and cyber knife, and now we can comfortably use tomotherapy or linear accelerators such as vital beam or true beam or rapid arc to treat these lesions. The characteristics of a brain metastases that make ideal targets for radiosurgery, the fact that you have a well-defined target on the CT or MRI, that it has a nice spherical shape. Most of these are small, less than four centimeters. They're generally not infiltrative, and they're located at the gray-white brain junction, which may be a safer area to treat. And again, we use the MR, we put it into the computer, we develop a radiation target, and then radiate that target. Well, which is better, surgery or radio surgery? And obviously, each one has some advantages. With surgery, you can treat larger lesions over four centimeters. You get quicker resolution of the mass effect and pressure and swelling. You get the cancer out of the body. You can histologically confirm this if there's any question about the type of cancer or if the oncologist wants to run more genetic testing on the cancer. You can more quickly get off of decadron or steroids. The follow-up is less intense. There's less risk of radiation necrosis. There is, however, risk of surgery, obviously, mortality of brain surgery, which is low, down to 2.3% nationally, but there is still that risk. So what are the advantages of radio surgery? Well, one, you can treat small, deep lesions that are in eloquent or delicate or dangerous areas of the brain. It's minimally invasive. You don't need general anesthesia. It's done as an outpatient. You can treat multiple lesions at the same time. Most people with brain metastases have multiple lesions. People get to work back quickly, much more quickly. You can avoid whole brain radiation, often in the memory problems, and you can get back on chemotherapy much more quickly. The most common cancers that spread to the brain are shown here. Some cancers, like small cell cancer, is considered so radiosensitive that generally they're treated with whole brain radiation rather than targeted. But some tumors like melanoma and kidney cancer that are very radio resistant are ideal for radio surgery because we can use a much more intense dose of radiation. And if you watch my other videos, you know I recommend the NCCN website as the best up-to-date current advice on treating cancer. As I dictate this in late 2017, they say if there are a limited number of brain metastases, one, two, or three, and stable systemic disease, meaning the cancer is not growing elsewhere, then surgery or radiation or surgery or radio surgery are ideal. If there are multiple lesions, then they lean more towards whole brain or still consider radio surgery an option. 
The other options that obviously would include no treatment at all. Some patients would rather do nothing and go to hospice. Chemotherapy is generally not a good option because of the poor penetration of the drugs into the brain because of the so-called blood-brain barrier. There are more and more new drugs called TKIs that are coming out that effectively get into the brain, so this is rapidly changing. But the main treatments are surgery, which is called a craniotomy, or whole brain radiation, just treat the whole brain, or radio surgery, highly targeted focused radiation. So which is better, surgery than whole brain radiation? And this has been studied. The most well-known study was by Patchell in the New England Journal a few years ago. And the patients who did have a craniotomy were much more likely to be alive and active than people who just had whole brain radiation. A similar paper by Nordnik showed the same thing, but only in people whose cancer was stable elsewhere. So the graph on the left, they were much more likely to benefit from surgery. The graph on the right shows that people who had progressive disease, the cancer is still spreading in their lung or other organs. There's no benefit to doing a craniotomy. If you do surgery, is post-op radiation necessary? Well, the problem here is if you do a resection, more than half the people will get a recurrence in the brain within 6 to 12 months. Whole brain radiation will cut that in half or better, but it doesn't have any impact impact on their survival and their possible memory problems. So a typical study, this one also by Patchell, compared surgery with surgery and whole brain radiation. In the surgery group, 70% of the time they had a recurrence in the brain and whole brain radiation reduced that down to 18%. The problem with whole brain radiation is it may affect memory and other so-called cognitive or thinking functions. If you just do radio surgery to the tumor bed after surgery, you get high local control rates, as noted here, 67, 92%, and pretty good survival, and you shouldn't affect memory. And so this study, the uh, cognitive impairment, thinking or memory problems at six months, was much lower in the radiosurgery group than the whole brain group. And if you compare people who had no radiation after surgery, or at least stereotactic, the stereotactic reduced the recurrence in the brain from 57% down to 28%. So it is effective and normally without the memory problems. So is radio surgery better than whole brain? Well, there are situations where you have to do whole brain radiation. These pictures here were patients of mine with small cell cancer of the lung, multiple brain metastases, too many and too big to do radio surgery. But fortunately, a small cell was generally sensitive to whole brain radiation. So this picture here on the left, multiple brain mets, and then six weeks after whole brain radiation, they're all gone. But most patients do better with radio surgery. This study from the RTOG, survival was better, 6.5 months versus 4.9. Another study from the University of Pittsburgh, radio surgery, much better survival. Um, and uh, adding whole brain radiation after radio surgery will lower the risk of of brain recurrence, but again, then you have the same problem with memory. Uh, this was a study with the memory decline at four months. If you just did radio surgery alone, only 24% had problems versus 52% if you added whole brain radiation. The overall survival by adding whole brain is the same, so there's no real benefit there. In another study, the so-called Alliance study, Adding whole brain radiation after radio surgery, you had more cognitive malfunction, more memory and thinking problems. You did have a higher control in the brain, but the overall survival kept coming out the same. So then finally, which is better, surgery or radio surgery? And there have been no good randomized uh, trials to compare them. There was a paper by Octor a number of years ago that showed the survival radio surgery 56 weeks was as good as not better than a craniotomy, 40 to 43 weeks. There was a paper by O'Neill where the survival was about the same. There was a paper by Raids that had a better survival with radio surgery than surgery, as noted. And there was a recent paper from Vienna where patients who had radio surgery did better than those who had a craniotomy. In summary, the results with radio surgery, local control should be 70% or so and up to 90% if you do add whole brain radiation. You can treat up to 10 tumors as long as the volume of tumor is not greater than 15 cc's. And you can even treat recurrent lesions. Uh, and then finally, the patients who do have radio surgery 
uh, will develop a relapse in the brain in 25 to 50 percent of the cases. So you have to pre prepare and anticipate a relapse. So the case here, the picture on the left was a lesion in the brain I treated in January 2011 with radiosurgery. 18 months later, the tumor is gone, just a little scar, but she's developed a new lesion on the other side of the brain. We were able to successfully treat that with radiosurgery. And then how long does it take to shrink? This, this is a case of uh, we treated with gamma knife. By 20 days, you can see when this big tumor is shrinking down nicely. With smaller tumors here, by four months, totally gone. Another case, four months, pretty big lesion, totally gone. Another small lesion, years later, totally gone, nothing visible. And even a large lesion like this, by 20 months, is virtually gone. And another lesion, melanoma, by 11 months, down to just a small speck. And then treating patients with multiple brain metastases. This was a study from Japan. Even up to five to 10 tumors at the same time, the survival was quite good. A study from Korea, similarly, even over 15 lesions at one time, survival good. An American study was probably more realistic here. If you get to five to 15 brain metastases, the survival was okay, but wasn't anywhere as good. And another study recently uh, that uh, uh, if the volume of tumor was less than seven cc's and there were less than seven, the survival with multiple brain wets was pretty darn good. So that is an option. And then survival, I talk more about survival with brain mets on some of the other videos, but in general, people do best if the cancer is only in the brain, not elsewhere, if the people are younger than 65, and if they have what's called a good performance score. And these are the RTOG classes using that system. And the, and the point here is patients who have a good performance score, good control, definitely benefit from radiosurgery rather than people who have more advanced disease. The doses of radiation have been pretty well defined by some of the RTOG and other trials. The radiation oncologists would obviously know this. The control rate is much better the smaller the tumor. With five millimeter lesions, the risk of a local relapse is only 4%. The side effects of radiosurgery, primarily the risk is radiation necrosis where there's some damage in that area. The numbers that are commonly used with primary radiosurgery, five to 10%. With post-operative radiosurgery, it's a little higher because often the target is bigger. But you can even retreat a patient who's been radiated before, and the risk of radio necrosis is not that high, 20%. And it looks like this on an MRI. Normally, the neuroradiologist can distinguish radio necrosis from recurrent tumor. Sometimes if there's enough symptoms or pressure, the patient needs decadron or even Avastin. The big problem is from whole brain radiation, it makes the brain look white. It's called leukoencephalopathy, too much water on the brain. By one year, virtually everybody has leukoencephalopathy. And that does affect memory to some degree. In this study, which was a randomized trial, uh, radio surgery, 24% had some memory problems. Whole brain, it was up to 52%, and this is just by four months. Another study, the numbers were 63% and up to 91% by three months. This study, perhaps a little better, they looked at the baseline memory and thinking prior to doing radiosurgery, and most people don't start out at a normal level. And radiosurgery by itself did not affect memory. And then the current NCCN guidelines, they do make the comment that SRS, or stereotactic radiosurgery, is an alternative to surgery, avoids the risk of surgery, and has very uncommon long-term side effects. This and more studies on cancer, radiation topics, and brain metastases can be found on my website about cancer.com or on my YouTube site, youtube.com slash user Robert Miller MD.